guys, welcome to Solar Motion VFX. So this is going to be a quick tutorial on uh, setting up a camera track inside of DaVinci Fusion and then export that data into Blender to set up a scene from there. This is going to be a quick run through because uh, there's tons of tutorials out there on how to actually do camera tracking inside of DaVinci Fusion as well as how to track inside of uh, Blender which has a really good uh, tracking uh, feature. But uh, I just want to use the workflow how to get your project from DaVinci into uh, Blender. So let's take a look at that. So let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and uh, from here you're going to import your media. I just have a scene here uh, from a parking garage and um, right click clip att attributes, video frame set to 30. Make sure my frame rate inside my project, timeline frame rate as well as my playback is set to 30. Go to edit, bring it down. This is how it looks like. And let's right click and make a new fusion clip. Jump into fusion and let's do a quick camera track on this one. All right. We got a solve of 0.6. Usually in a, all programs actually advise to you get a solve below one pixel. So 0.6 is really good, but uh, of course we can refine that. So uh, I'm just gonna up my minimum track length to nine, and the maximum maximum solve arrow to two. And you see all these yellow dots selected, so you can go ahead and delete those and make another solve. All right, so we got a uh, 0.4, and that's a uh, really good, almost 0.5, but. Uh, we can definitely work with that. So now I'm just gonna open a, a, set up the 3D scene in here and just add a test geometry just to see how it looks like. And then we're gonna export that data uh, into Blender. Alright guys, so uh, this is what we have right now. I just put in a test geometry cube on the scene just to see how that looks like. Can add in some lights and shadows here. Uh, let's just uh, pause it here. Let's check our spotlight because I know you actually someone asked about this. How we can uh, use the the lights in here. Of course, you can just give it a color, like so. Now you have some light and shading on your geometry here. And if uh, you can always uh, disable the ground plane here, you don't need to see that, like so. So this one works for us. And just a quick tip here, uh, from the camera tracker, this is actually the same as the render node up here. This camera tracker, you see here, it's a render node. If you just right click that and then bring it down so your camera track in front of that, it's gonna automatically create a merge node for you so you can actually see it on your normal media out. So that means you can actually see it on your final output over here in your edit tab. Like so. Okay. Okay, so in order to get this out, let's bring in an FBX export a node like so and then define where you want to save that remember to give it a save type as fbx save it and then make sure your frame rate here is uh, 30 you have your location you have your frame rate and version choose fbx 20 uh, 1300 i see find that works best for in my case and then the scale units do a 0.1 And then also, let's bring in our transform, transform node, uh, the 3D one, not the 2D. This one, and this one, we want to set the scale to 100. Okay, so let's pipe that into the XBX exporter and pipe the transform into the merge node over here. Let's see. Like so. So this is what we got right now, 
and then uh, basically what you want to do is go up to the fusion and then uh, render all savers and it's going to render all, all this sequence here but uh, for the sake of this tutorial I just want to make it short and sweet so let's do let's see 70 like so and then render all savers so now it's completed let's jump into blender in uh, blender hit a x to delete everything on the scene go to file and then uh, import do the fbx and then uh, go to your path where you saved your fbx file import that and this is what you have right now so you have your camera you have your cube if you hit comma you can see it's zooming into that shape i want two two views here so this left one i'm gonna press zero so it's gonna look from the camera and then what you want to do is ensure that uh, your uh, frame start starts from zero and not one that's important make sure it's the same frame rate so that's good then go up to your camera and from the camera let's see here background images add image movies with that so now we're looking at but we need to switch the camera around so let's go over to the uh, let's see to the object data here and this is the important part let's see if we scale in here look at the camera on the scale x minus one and z minus one that should rotate it like so and you see we have this over here remember world origin right and uh, let's see uh, for the camera part itself focal length so it was set to 25 plug that number in here and now it's adding up as you see it here and also clipping I'm gonna bump that up so we can actually see our cube and there you have it and now you can add in whatever geometry you want like so look at that perfectly attracts your scene from Da Vinci into uh, Blender so that's how you do that part and from here you can of course go in and uh, sit up and recreate this scene as much as possible So now we create just a basic uh, plane geometry and uh, now actually let's add the UV modifier uh, some material to actually see our footage onto this geometry. So here. Let's go into the shader view. And add a new material to this one. Delete this one, add in a emission node. Add in a image section and it's an image sequence. The start frame is a zero. Remember that. Okay, so now you have your material on. So let's go in and uh, make a quick UV unwrap on, the, on this here. So select everything and then hit U. And just make a smart UV project. Okay, like so. This is what we are seeing right now. Press the home button to enlarge that. Okay, so let's go in and uh, add that, <coughs> add a UV modifier, UV project. And for the object, let's choose our camera. So this is what we are seeing right now. We are getting there, right? And a UV map, just choose the UV map, like so. And then for the stretching part, what you want to do is actually go in and add uh, another modifier and you do the subdivision modifier. Make it simple and make sure that it is on the first top layer, like so. And then I found four, works really good on the levels and also four on the, I'll just check that on the window. So this is what you have right now when you look it through here. So. Hit F12, this is 
you'll be seeing here and you can just uh, subdivide it if you're seeing some distortions just do some more subdivision right but uh, something really important here for the aspect right for the aspect you need to on the X you need to divide your resolution so you get an aspect ratio so you're gonna divide 1920 with 1080 and that would be 1.77778 something so I'm just gonna put 1.778 here like so so now we have the correct aspect ratio so now we get a little bit more this wider scene here so that looks really good and so this is what we have right now so just go back to a shader editor and from repeat choose clip okay so now you're not seeing all that all the areas now you're only seeing your projection here so that's pretty cool let's go back to the view here Press home to enlarge that and go back to the 3d viewport all right so th this looks pretty cool and so from here yeah you created the scene you can put in some uh, let's add in a UV spear Should. and we're getting reflection of our environment as well okay so there you have it guys a little uh, camera track export from uh, Fusion into Blender and then uh, composite in there. You can do whatever you want, Cre recreate your scene, uh, build all this geometry, make some fog lights coming in from these uh, different uh, windows here, and then uh, you can actually do a really nice uh, composite in here using the composite options here. Use nodes, set up different renders here, render layers where you can uh, add some shadows, some other objects. So, really nice way to interact with your live uh, footage here. So, I hope you find this useful, guys. Thank you.